Here are 10 things you need to check before pressing record so that you don't make the same mistakes that we did. What's up guys, Matt here with tomorrowsfilmmakers.com and today we're gonna talk about 10 things that we often forget to check because we're rushed on a video shoot. I can't tell you how many times I've been setting up for an interview and they say that our time has been cut in half or the person sits down and is waiting for me to finish setting everything up and we get all flustered and we feel rushed and we tend to forget these 10 very important things to check before we press record. In fact, these 10 things that I wanna talk about, I have personally forgotten to check on shoots when I felt rushed and it drastically affected the quality of my work, made the post-production process just that much more difficult or in the worst case scenarios, made me have to reschedule and do the shoot all over again, which is just awful. Some of these things may feel like a no-brainer, but I promise you it's super easy to forget or rush past some of these really important steps. We all make mistakes, and some of these I'm about to share are unfortunately from personal experiences, but of course there is so much more to these 10 steps than what I'm going to go over in this video, and there is some theory involved in some of them, and if you would like to learn even more about each of these steps inside our full online academy, we have over 1,200 video lessons and over 120 hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking imaginable as well as photography writing and editing courses all taught by leading professionals in each category learn the best from the best join over 25,000 other students just like you who are pursuing their dreams and becoming successful filmmakers that being said let's jump right into these top 10 things it's super easy to forget to check before pressing record on your next shoot. Now, first up, this might sound like an absolute no-brainer, but the first thing you're gonna wanna check is if your camera is level and make sure that your framing is exactly how you want it. We're going to get into all of the technical things to check before pressing record in a second, but before you even start to mess with any of that, you gotta make sure you're setting yourself up for success by leveling your camera and making sure your framing is where you want it. Most cameras nowadays have leveling systems built into them and show you a little graphic on the screen that lets you know if you're level to the ground or not. If your shot is crooked, you'll see red or maybe some orange. And once you adjust it to where it's level, you'll see green. This little tool is super helpful and it's very important to make sure that you're not crooked. One time I didn't tighten my tripod down all the way. So during the interview, the camera kept getting lower and lower and I didn't even notice. In addition to leveling out your shot, you're gonna wanna make sure the framing and composition is where you want it to be. You can clean up the edges of your frame so they look less like this and more like this. You don't wanna have to crop in during your edit when you could have just zoomed in or moved a little bit closer when you were actually on the shoot. Speaking of trying to have the best quality image, next up, you need to check your resolution. This is super important because honestly, it's the step that I think I found myself messing up the most. Making sure you're shooting in the right resolution is especially important when you have multiple cameras with different resolution capabilities and you're constantly matching them. The worst thing ever is doing some sort of multicam sequence with four cameras only to realize that three of them shot in 4K and one of them in 2K or 1080p. This means that you'd either have to upscale the footage or downscale the other three. You can always downscale the footage, but whenever you end up having to upscale, you're gonna get a really, really soft and mushy image. And it's super important to check these settings before you start filming because the consequences are pretty bad if you don't. I accidentally filmed an entire project in 720p and didn't even realize until I got home. So don't make the same mistakes as me. Next, if you're used to shooting a lot of video, you know just how important it is to check your frame rate. Imagine you finish a long day of shooting a wedding video and you mostly capture slow motion footage at 120 frames per second, but then you wake up the next day to film an interview and you're halfway done when you realize at the top of your screen, it says 120 frames per second instead of what it should say, 24 frames per second. Now, you have a full interview that looks odd to the eye because it was shot at a frame rate designed for slow motion. Now, unless your interviewer is talking like this, you don't want it to be in slow motion. If you are shooting something cinematic where you might need to slow the footage down for some slow motion action, shooting at a higher frame rate like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second is crucial. But if you're shooting something more like an interview, you want it to be at a lower frame rate of like 24 frames per second. The reason that this is easy to forget about is because on the back of the camera, it looks great to the eye and you aren't really able to see a huge difference when it comes to frame rate. So always remember to think about the shot you are going for and set your frame rate accordingly for it. 
This is something unlike some of these other steps that is practically impossible to correct in post-production and would likely end in you having to go shoot everything all over again. So once you shoot a project in a certain frame rate, you're pretty much stuck there. Next is your focus. Most newer mirrorless cameras have amazing autofocus, but if you find yourself using manual focus for a project, it's always possible that you're setting up a shot and you focus on your subject just right, and then you get distracted with something else just to see that the person you were filming stepped backwards just enough to be out of focus, but for you to not really be able to tell on the back of the camera. Now your whole shot is out of focus. One step to avoid this would be to have your subject stand on a marker and then set focus on that same marker to avoid this mistake. Another really important step before filming your subject is determining how much depth of field you need and setting your aperture and focus at the right setting for the job. Are you shooting a landscape where you need everything to be in focus? Try raising your aperture to something like f8 or f16 to get more of the frame and focus. Or maybe you're shooting a video of a subject like product photography where you want the background to be super blurry to better showcase the main subject. Either way, setting your focus as well as your distance from whatever you're shooting will help dramatically improve your overall shot. This next step is one of the most crucial things to think about before hitting record and that is white balance. Your white balance determines how your camera will interpret different colors within your frame. This looks really, really bad, but this looks great. Setting your white balance helps your camera determine what is true white based on your current surroundings. Different environments give off different color temperatures, so it is very important to set your camera up for success based on the environment you are in. And this also doesn't mean to have your white balance set to auto. Set your white balance manually by using a Kelvin temperature or even by using a gray card to get a custom white balance for your shot. Even most beginner cameras have options or presets for you to go in and use to help properly set your camera up to receive light in the best color possible. And if you're doing multiple interviews or shots in multiple environments, change your white balance with each location. It's important to focus on the exposure and composition when moving to a different location, but it's just as equally important to remember to fix your white balance before you press record. Speaking of exposure, the next thing to really pay attention to and make sure you set properly is your exposure, especially your shutter speed. Setting your shutter speed properly based on what you're about to film is super important to the overall look and feel of your project. A mistake that we see a lot of our students make in the very beginning of their filming career is that they will turn on their camera, see that the image is exposed to what seems like the proper exposure, but in reality, their shutter is all the way up to like 2000 and their ISO is cranked all the way up to like 6400 to adjust for it. It's really easy to turn your camera on and make this mistake, especially if the light looks okay at first. A general rule of thumb, a general rule of thumb when it comes to your shutter speed is to double your frame rate. So for instance, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second for a natural look, your shutter should be at around 50. This will give it the most natural and cinematic look for your footage. I filmed interviews before where I didn't realize I was shooting at a high shutter speed and a high ISO to correct the image for absolutely no reason. Even if the exposure looks good on the back of the camera, be sure to see exactly what your settings are. This is extremely important. The seventh thing I always make sure to check is to set up my picture profile. For video, this is extremely important. You always want to give yourself the most room for creative direction in the editing process. The best way to set yourself up for success is to shoot in a flat color profile so that you have more room for changes when you sit down at your computer to edit in post. If your camera has a log profile, use that if you really want to take advantage of the colors your camera is designed to have. The worst thing you could do is shoot in a picture profile your camera has built in like standard only to start your edit process and realize your colors are too contrasty or too vibrant with no real way to fix it. With vivid or other extreme profiles, you can always try to fix this in post, but it won't be the same as if you had just shot it in log and brought those colors all in later. I promise if you make this mistake once, you'll remember it next time. Looking at this talking head, this is what it looked like when I shot it, and this is what it looked like when I color graded it. Thank goodness I didn't shoot it in Vibrant, otherwise it would probably just look like this. When I'm shooting in Log, I make sure to still have my LCD screen displaying the image in a Rec. 709 look so I can get the correct exposure. It's still shooting in a flat picture profile, but the back of the screen is showing me what it will look like once it's color graded. Don't shoot in log and have the back of your LCD screen be in log as well. It's very difficult to tell the correct exposure when you're seeing an image so flat 
on the back of your camera. I've done this before because I didn't have time and I didn't set my camera up properly. I know, I know, I keep saying the next step is the most important, but depending on what it is you're capturing, this next step could very well be the absolute most important part of your project, and this would be your audio. A simple mistake of forgetting to hit record on your audio device could be the sole reason your amazing footage is absolutely useless. Imagine this. You're conducting an interview with someone and your colors, your lighting, your frame rate, exposure, everything else is set up perfectly, but you make the simple mistake of not making sure your audio device is recording. This could be the difference between your work sounding like a middle school project, just like this, or sounding like a million bucks. This happened to me literally just a few months ago. I was recording a talking head with my microphone plugged into my interface, just like this is right here. And, but somehow I forgot to select the microphone as my input device on my screen capture. So all I got was some super reverby laptop audio as my main audio source. And I had to record it all over again in a completely different environment with a microphone that was actually plugged in and selected as my input. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So make sure you have the correct source selected make sure you hit record and also make sure you monitor your audio. I'm literally watching this level go up right now because I'm terrified that that might happen again since I've already done it. A long time ago, I did an interview where I listened to the audio for like five seconds. It sounded good. And then when I went back to sit in my chair, I bumped the cable and disconnected it from the recorder, which means I filmed an entire hour long interview without capturing any audio because I didn't monitor the sound. So always, always, always remember to hit record on whatever device you're using to capture audio and monitor your audio. I don't care how stressed and rushed you are, calm down, take a deep breath, and make sure your audio sounds great. The next thing to pay attention to is your memory storage and formatting your SD card. Not only is it just a safe practice to always use a freshly formatted SD card for every new project you're a part of, but it's also crucial in knowing just how much storage you have to work with. One tip I can give you from my own personal experience is always having an extra formatted SD card with you for every project you need. <laughs> That's perfect. A couple of years ago, I was shooting a wedding and I was doing all the family pictures and I was about halfway through the bride's family when I went to take a picture and all I saw was memory card full. And I promise from that moment on, I've never shot a wedding without another SD card ready to go in my wallet, in my back pocket, ready for me to just swap out if I need to. I had to awkwardly say, hey, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go eat a new SD card and run back to where my bag was and find a card. It was awful, I don't recommend it. Always keep a spare SD card on you at all times. Do you think you'll need 50 gigabytes of storage for your shoot? Bring at least two 64 gigabyte cards. Oftentimes I will personally keep a spare SD card somewhere like in my wallet, like I said, for those instances where you're halfway through a project and you need some more storage or even worse, you bring all your gear to a shoot just to turn on your camera to a message saying no SD card. That way you always know you're safe and have a backup ready to use. Imagine you're conducting an interview and your subject starts to get emotional and telling their story, but your available storage is about to run out. And so now you have to politely ask them to stop in the middle of their emotional interview in order for you to switch out your SD card because you didn't have the proper size card in your camera. The same idea applies to our next step, which is battery life. It is always a smart thing to do to just keep a ton of fully charged batteries in your bag. And similar to like your SD cards, make sure you always, always have backups. One thing I do is I try to even plug an extra battery into the charger at the location of my shoot, just to keep peace in my mind that I have a battery in my camera and another charging at that moment is just a good feeling overall. If you're shooting video, try to never start filming with a battery less than 80% and never let your battery go down below 30%. The last thing you want to have to worry about is your camera dying in the middle of a shot. And honestly, it's just good practice to swap out your batteries before they die, so you never have to worry about your camera just randomly turning off in the middle of a video capture. It's very possible you would lose the shot you were filming, and if you aren't lucky enough to have your camera save it before it dies, the shot's just gone. So even if you have multiple full batteries, start one charging in the corner while you film. It makes a huge difference and has actually saved me a few times. All right, so remember guys, the reason I'm making this video is because I have done all of these things. And if I'm rushed, these are some of the first things that slip my mind, but no matter how flustered you get, 
always remember to check your composition and level of your camera, your resolution and frame rate, your focus and your white balance. Make sure your exposure settings are correct, especially your shutter speed. Make sure you're shooting in a flat picture profile and you're recording and monitoring your audio. And finally, that you have a formatted SD card and a full battery to work with. If you can successfully remember these 10 things to check before pressing record, you will not run into nearly as many problems as we have. So I hope this video has helped you guys out and given you an outline of some of the most important things to check before filming your project to ensure you get the best finished result with the least amount of headaches along the way. If you found this video helpful and wanna learn even more about your camera, audio, or career in your own cinematography career taught by leading professionals, I would highly encourage you to check out our full course at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over 1,200 training videos and over 120 hours of content on every single filmmaking subject that you can possibly imagine. If you'd like to join over 25,000 other filmmakers just like you, pursuing their dreams and learning all about film, click the link below and sign up for our full academy for just 97 bucks. This way, you'll have one place where you can learn all about filmmaking taught by leading professionals in the film industry. So click the link in the description below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com and learn all the skills that you need to succeed.